Hello there, people of the internet. This is your daily reminder to pre-order Xenoblade Definitive Edition. So go do it. Go out now. What are you waiting for? What's wrong with you? Now that we got that out of the way, today I figured we'd talk about the newly announced epilogue that will be included in Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, Future Connected. In this video, we will focus on the potential narrative inclusions of Future Connected and what the epilogue can add to the world and story of Xenoblade and the connections it can potentially make between Xenoblade 1, 2, and even Xenoblade Chronicles X. But before we get into that, I want to quickly talk about some of the non-story related inclusions offered here as well. Again, I just want to ask you all kindly, if you like this content, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me gauge what you all enjoy, and please, let me know. What do you think they're going to include in Future Connected? Uh, whether it's something that could link the stories of the characters together, or give a little more of a conclusion and finalize a character's arc, or just, you know, some random thing they could include out of the blue, I don't know. Just uh, let me know what you think. So first... A good thing to note is that Future Connected can be played right out of the box, meaning that you don't have to play through the base game in order to access the content. Now, this leads me to believe that progression, equipment, and levels in the main game will not carry over into Future Connected, which makes sense because Shulk is wearing a whole new armor set and is wielding a brand new Monado replica, meaning they likely introduced those not only as an aesthetic change, but to also give this epilogue its own unique set of tools. This will also likely mean that the character customization in Future Connected will be drastically limited. In the promo art, we also see that Melia has a new weapon that eerily resembles the Monado in color and form. Take with that what you will. The epilogue will also include new music as well. We've already got glimpses of the new battle theme, and we know that they're re-recording many of the game's songs already, so I'm excited to hear more. We also see here that Shulk and Melia are accompanied by two unfamiliar looking Nopon, which you have to wonder why they included new characters and not just kept someone like Ricky in the party. I imagine that those Nopon are also additional playable characters. I don't know what story inclusion they could have yet, but the fact that there's a green one and a pink one could mean that each of them might have connections to Shulk and Melia specifically. What would these two little Nopon want to search for by going to the Bionis shoulder? Perhaps they're just traveling merchants on the way to Alchemoth to try to see if they can find something to trade, or maybe they're looking for friends or loved ones that might be trapped there. And then there's one big landmark that I think is of note here, and that's actually in the promo art. You see that big tower that looks like a tree trunk. It's kind of decayed and it looks like ruins. That seems to be an area of a big focal point. I don't know what they're going to do there, how they're going to get there, or what that place will offer. But if I had to take a guess, that location would likely have to do with the black portal that is shown off in the trailer. Also, I just want to bring this one up pretty briefly, but Shulk's new outfit it's killer, dude. I love it. It's so simple and uh, it gives off this kind of like summer attitude vibe and it's a lot less flashy and weird. It, it looks really conservative and I actually enjoy the new outfit that Chalk has, uh, has donned in this uh, little epilogue here. Now, with that said, let's talk about Future Connected's new story content. As a self-contained story, this epilogue seems to be giving the most closure to Melia's character, who was in all honesty pushed to the wayside at the end of Xenoblade. Here Shulk offers to take her back to the high NTA capital of Alchemoth to find any survivors of Zanza's assault and destruction of her home. We learn that during the defeat of Zanza and the destruction of the Bionis, Alchemoth had moved from the Bionis' head to its shoulder, a brand new area that we've yet to explore. This seems to be the basic crux of the story here. I doubt we'll see anything more than slight cameos from all the other main characters here, though I would like to see how certain characters have developed over time. The last thing I want to say about the self-contained story has to do with this one scene here, where a giant laser beam coming directly from Alchemoth strikes the ship that Melia and Shulk are on. This not only proves that life exists in the capital, 
but it also confirms that a new threat exists here. With the destruction of Zanza and peace being made between the Mechon and Homs, who could that threat be? Honestly, I have no idea. It could be the High Antia themselves, perhaps the ones that changed back from Telethia became indoctrinated, or maybe those that followed Lorithia still remained and are inhabiting Alchemoth? Honestly, I have no idea. Now, the first thing that set me off with this idea of this game being tied to the events of Xenoblade 2 and X is this black portal. So to catch those up that don't know, one character is responsible for the creation of the worlds of Xenoblade and Xenoblade 2, and that's a scientist named Klaus. In searching for an answer to the meaning of life, Klaus had activated something called the Conduit, an item that has the ability to connect together different dimensions. In doing this, Klaus split himself in two, separating himself into two dimensions. In one dimension, Klaus became Zanza, the embodiment of the Bionis that was locked in eternal conflict with the Mechonis, who was inhabited by the soul of another scientist who was near him at the time, with the other half of his body being stuck in the same dimension that this had all started. Klaus became the Architect, a being that created the world of Xenoblade 2 from the remnants of the world that he destroyed by activating the Conduit. Once Shulk defeated Zanza, Klaus disappeared in both dimensions. What does this have to do with a random black portal in Future Connected? Well, I'm led to believe that this black portal may be some remnant of the Conduit, it being a portal to another dimension, or a secret to the meaning of life. I could easily see Shulk jumping into it and taking Klaus's spot as a result of some ultimatum from Alvis or something. Although these potential events may tie things together with the story of Xenoblade 2, we have to keep in mind the name of this new content. Future Connected. The thing is, the events of Xenoblade 1 and 2 take place around the same time, albeit in two different dimensions, meaning that the two worlds may be connected here, but a future is not. This is where I think Xenoblade X potentially comes in. X has a rather futuristic design and world, and I could see the events in this epilogue connecting the world and events of X. Perhaps the world that the characters from Earth travel to in the events of Xenoblade Chronicles X are actually just maybe some remnants of the world of the Bionis and the Mechonis, we don't know yet. Keep in mind that this part is just speculation, and I really have no idea how they'll attempt to thread these games together just yet. Regardless of how they do it, I'm both excited and nervous to see how they thread the series together and finalize the plot of Xenoblade in this epilogue. Also, Monolith, please make Xenoblade X2. Y'all left that game on a cliffhanger, and it's been like five years now, please. I'm begging you.